Hi. Uh, so today we'll be solving a system of equations known as the uh, Lorentz system. So this system of equation they are called. Uh, excuse me. So this system of equation is the Lorentz system because it was studied by a scientist named Lorentz. The interesting thing about this system of equations is that uh, they have chaotic solutions for certain values of sigma, rho, and beta. Chaotic means that uh, if I change the initial conditions by even a small uh, minuscule amount, the final solution is uh, very much different than it had been when the initial conditions weren't changed. Uh, so that may be confusing, I'll repeat. So if, for example, the initial conditions for this system of equations, if they are 1, 1, 1, I get some solution. And if I change the initial conditions to 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, the solution I would get will be completely different from what I had earlier. So that means chaotic. Uh, chaotic systems are very difficult to predict. Uh, and we'll see how, we, in fact, we, uh, that is why we'll be solving, uh, that is why we'll be solving these equations using ODE45 to see what chaotic behavior looks like. So in order to solve these equations in ODE45, we need to uh, rewrite them. So let me rewrite, let me uh, name D, uh, let me name X1 as, uh, let me name X as X1 and rewrite the first equation as sigma and let me name Y as X2. So this is X2 minus X1. This is DX2 by DT X1 rho minus let me re name uh, rename z as x3 minus x2 and finally dx3 by dt is x1 x2 minus beta x3 okay so we have these three equations and now we'll be able to solve them in octave so let's open up octave this is already open let me exit it because i need to create a file first let me call that file uh, yeah, Lorenz that seems like a good name Lorenz uh, diff dot m okay so we need to define certain constants so the constants that we have are uh, rho sigma and uh, beta all right so these constants uh, as I said, these uh, Lorentz system of equations, they show chaotic behavior for certain values of these constants, but for certain other values, they have stable solutions. So first, uh, we'll first look at the stable solutions. Uh, so the values for which we have stable solutions are 14, rho equals 14, sigma equals 10, and uh, beta equals 8 by 3. Okay. <coughs> so uh, let me write down the uh, ODE function which is uh, t comma x and what is it it's sigma times x2 minus x1 the second one is x1 times rho minus x3 minus uh, x2 and the final one is x1 times x2 minus beta times x3 these are the equations that we have. Let me define our age, time range, 0 with an interval of 0 0.01 to 100 initial conditions. So let those be uh, for x1, x2 and x3, let me let them be 1, 1, 1. And finally, let me store the solution in t comma x and the solution would be returned by the function ODE45. It takes ODE1, it takes the t range, time range and it takes the initial conditions. Let me plot. Okay. So remember this is a system of three equations and they return uh, three uh, values x1, x2 and x3 and they correspond to the coordinates, the three coordinates of space x1, x, y, z. So we need to use a three dimensional plot here. So the function that we'll be using is plot three and the coordinates that we'll pass them for plotting are x, this is the first coordinate at all the time, time uh, steps, this is the second coordinate y at all the time steps and this is the third coordinate set at all the time steps. Let me save this, open up Octave, run, there's a error. So I think I've given an extra space, maybe that's why it's showing an error. Or there's an extra uh, bracket parenthesis. So let me change it. Yeah, 
seems to have extra. So I remove that. That should do. Right. So I have this figure. Let me see how it looks like. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the solution has started. Uh, the, the initial condition was this point, and the solution eventually spirals down, or the location x y z. It uh, the solution eventually evolves, and it goes down the spiral. And this is a stable solution. And how we can um, and this is not chaotic. How do we verify that? So let's go back here. Let's copy this line. Exit and let me paste this line. And let me change. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me change the initial conditions. One to one point one. One. Right. The only thing I've changed is the x initial condition one to one point one. And let me plot it on top of the earlier plot. So as you can see, uh, the the solution number two, which is given by a red line, is completely overlapping the solution number one. So even changing the initial condition by a small amount doesn't do much to uh, the eventual. Uh, so eventual solution so changing the initial conditions by a small amount doesn't change the final solution so this is not a chaotic system this is a stable uh, system but we need to observe chaotic behavior right so let me go back and change the source file and we'll observe chaotic behavior if we have uh, row equals 28 uh, you can get these values in wikipedia or any other website which discusses these types of systems uh, so that that is all that we have to do and let me run it for this and what we can do is uh, let me copy these two lines and uh, yeah. so what I need to do is first I'll plot it for these values of initial conditions and then I'll change the initial condition and I'll plot it for a different value of initial conditions so see here it is 1 1 1 and then I'll plot another graph on top of this with an initial condition of 1 1 let's change this slightly very slightly 1.0001 and because this is because the system is chaotic even the slight change in the initial condition will lead to a very different result that you'll see so as you can see even a slight change in the initial condition will be visible here see the both the initial conditions are very close to each other in fact you cannot even make out the difference in this graph but as time passes on the path change completely you can see that the red line is not on top of blue line anymore and it chooses a path which is not matching with the earlier one so this is chaotic behavior right even a small uh, change in uh, this uh, even a small change in the in initial conditions gives very diff different solutions so uh, yeah i'll show you one more interesting uh, thing regarding this plot uh, yeah, one one more thing I forgot to mention. When when we talk about chaotic behavior, a thing uh, should come to your mind. Uh, a term that comes to your mind would be uh, the butterfly effect, and you can see that where that name comes from, right? This image on your computer does look something like a butterfly, doesn't it? So there's another another small thing that I would like to show you. There's a command called uh, comet three in Octave, and what it does is it follows the path that you have given and uh, so as you can see this comet starts from that point and it goes it follows the path and it goes around the curve that you have defined so anyway you can play with this command if you want and so so uh, this is it for today uh, thank you for watching i'll upload another lecture on ode45 another video on ode45 shortly thank you